Hi and welcome back to the Simon Oxfizz Book Club. I'm Simon Oxfizz. This is the book. We don't actually have a physical club. I should probably fix that. You are the club. This is the book club where anybody who wants to join along reads the same book as me. Uh, for the past little while, it's actually been longer than I said it would because I've been really busy with the PhD, sorry, um, has been SBQR by Mary Beard. This is a book uh, basically detailing about 700 years of history between the founding of Rome and the uh, point in 212 AD where the Emperor Caracalla gave citizenship to all inhabitants of the Roman Empire, which kind of is like a key milestone event. Um, and the short review I'm going to give you at the start of this video is it's absolutely amazing. Before moving on to the main body of the video though, there are two announcements very quickly. First of all, there is a Goodreads group for this book club now. So I have Goodreads, and there's a link down there in the description. I'm Simon Oxfizz on, group reason, uh, on Goodreads, and you can add me. But there's also now a Simon Oxfizz book club group, uh, which anybody can join and join in the discussion. So hopefully, well, at the moment there's sort of threads on there about the thing which we're reading at the time. So that was SPQR um, and also another book, uh, which I have down there, which I'm also doing a book club on very soon as like a special. Um, there's like, so, so there's discussion threads about that. There'll be polls about that kind of thing. And I kind of want you guys to use it to get to know each other and to get to know, so I can get to know you because, you know, we're all massive nerds. We like books, we've got something in common. So let's kind of, you know, <laughs> safety in numbers. Let, let's mesh together as a community. So that's a resource which um, is, is up and running and it's got about like 90 people in at the moment, so let's get, get that growing. Second announcement is because of a poll that we did on the Goodreads group, we're going to be reading next, Sapiens A Brief History of Humankind by Yuval Noah Harari, I think I got his name right, which is another big history kind of book. So over the next four weeks I'm going to try and get this one, like speed this one out much quicker compared to this one because I'm, I am going to be good, I'm going to be dedicated. Um, that's what we're going to be reading, so if you'd like to read that along with me I'd recommend that you either get a copy from your local library or support your local bookshop and we go on that experience together. After that I'm just going to pick a fiction book because um, I, I want us to do something that's non -fic that's not non-fiction uh, and we can have a bit more of an in-depth discussion about the themes and that kind of thing. So next, Sapiens A Brief History of Humankind. So I've already told you that this book is absolutely fantastic. Now why do I think that and who do I think should, should read it? So as I already mentioned this is uh, quite a big chunk of history that this book is looking at. It's looking at from uh, what about 500 BC to approximately 200 AD or CE um, and it's detailing a part of history that at least in the UK everybody has been taught at school. Everybody does the Romans I think in primary school and in secondary school and this is actually a point I want to come back to later but we focus in school very much on the military of Rome I think it'd be fair to say because we were a province that was conquered perhaps it makes sense that you know you say to kids these were the the Italians that ruled over us 2,000 years ago look at what they did they made shields like um, tortoises out of their shields isn't that cool um, and, it, and it, it very much focuses on one really quite small aspect of what Roman life was like this book is a, is very much about the bigger themes and it's a bit much greater slice across Roman society um, you know, it includes everything from the uh, the political system uh, through like women's representation in Rome, um, how Rome was perceived by others, how Rome perceived itself. Um, th there's, it's just, it's so much more interesting than how we were taught the Romans in school. I mean, history and English are my strongest subjects at school. Like maths, definitely wasn't. Science wasn't. Um, I think if I'd honestly, if I read this book when I was sort of 15, 16, I probably end, ended up doing a history or classics degree because this is the the best the best way to convince somebody that history isn't boring, history is relevant, and that there's so much you can learn from what's happened in the past. And interestingly, Mary Beard talks about at the very end of the book about the fact that you know it's not to say that we're going to learn anything directly useful from how the Romans did their system of government. It's not that knowledge itself isn't going to you know, help us, or even looking at where it went wrong, is that's not going to help us. It's the techniques and the analysis which you develop from looking at it. Not the actual facts, but the mechanisms that you've used to uh, investigate the facts. Mary Beard, incidentally, is a fantastic, fantastic author. Um, her her prose is like a, like a razor blade. It's so crisp, it's really sharp, there's no ambiguity whatsoever about what she means. Um, it's consistently engaging. I mean, honestly, this is now the gold standard for me of how you should write a popular history book because this was just, I mean, every time I came to it, you come away with some, some 
incredibly well articulated point. The point itself is interesting, but you're also kind of marvelling at how succinctly and how well she argued it. Right there. That's Bay. And in a way, the um, you kind of marvel at the way in which she analyses stuff. There are interesting gobbits that you learn about the Romans from this book. For example, um, the, the the fact that in some area it was it was one province. In order to be elected an official, I think it might have been mayor of a town, you had to be a certain level of wealth, and that was a common thing, you know, through, throughout Roman society. But in that particular town, they denoted wealth by the number of tiles on your roof. Um, which to us sounds really weird, but there were, she sort of talks through the logic about why that would be the case. Another really interesting bit of analysis, just to give you an example of, of sort of the, the thought process that basically occurs throughout this book, she looks at um, a mural in the city of Pompeii, which was behind a bar, um, and talks about the bar's position in uh, in social life, not necessarily that particular one, but the idea of a bar in Roman society, what it meant, where you were socioeconomically if you were frequenting a bar, what, what kind of person was going there. Um, and there's there's a mural which had different Greek philosophers. I think it was it was it was some number. I think it might have been seven, um, who'd all done particularly famous things, and they'd all had their mottos related to their work defaced, and all talking about defecation and about taking poos. And she sort of says, well, yeah, this is obviously it tells you several things. It tells you the fact that there's um, a clear class divide, the fact that the poor perceive the rich as having this this whole culture, this this Greek stuff, um, which you know. It, it, much as sort of we do now, I suppose you know you have people that go to the opera, and then you have people that watch X Factor. There's like, the, the, there's a there's a perceived really big culture divide, but it also says that yes, the, so yes, there's that yes, there's a divide sort of in social strata, but it's saying that they're mocking them. But in order to mock them, they have to have a certain level of understanding of the thing itself. So it's not funny to defile some Greek philosophers saying about with poo, unless you know kind of what that philosopher was famous for. So it actually infers something about the level of education of the lowest the lower social strata in Roman society. And it's that kind of analysis that I just, it was just brilliant throughout this book. Absolutely amazing. I honestly can't recommend the thought processes behind this enough. And it looks, like I said at the start, right? So in history in the UK, at least, we focus on sort of the sexy parts of, of Roman history and the military and, you know, you colour in, in primary school, the Roman legion, all that kind of stuff. But this, to me, is so much more interesting. This looks at the much, much bigger questions in history, like asking why are we so obsessed with the idea of the personality of these emperors? How, um, you know, how important really was it that perhaps Claudius was a little bit mad? Or even was he? Was that political smear? Does that tell you something about the political system and, and the manner of succession and the Augustinian model? Um, you know, how, how important were their personalities? How important were, by contrast, the, the um, trade factors, the way in which Rome interacted with its its neighbours? Um, another thing that occurs quite early on is looking at the mythology of Rome and about the founding of Rome, and people saying, well, of course, um, uh, Roman emperors were going to be particularly um, treacherous and, you know, and um, murder people to, and assassinate the political officers to get where they want, because it's, you know, it's in their nature. Romulus did it to Remus. Well, actually, Perhaps the mythology was retconned or, ch or changed to fit the activities of Romans at the time. So because people went around murdering lots of people to get political office, perhaps they modified the mythology to reflect the societies. It's 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 the other way around that we kind of can kind of tend to be thought uh, tend to be taught this stuff. The other thing, the other big takeaway I think I got from this book was. Maybe I'm alone in thinking this, but I don't think I am. I always used to think that the Empire, the Roman Empire, so basically after the death of Julius Caesar and when um, his adopted son Augustus became an em became the first emperor, um, I always thought that that empire was much more interesting than the Republic before it. Possibly because I've been taught about the Romans via the sort of the militaristic route, and um, you know, this book told me that I was totally wrong. <laughs> The foundation of the Republic is so much more interesting than the Empire, the um, the political manoeuvrings, the ideas that went into the Republic, and sort of analysing, well, for one thing, why was there a Roman Republic when it was no re really no different in 500 BC from any number of city-states? Um, why were the Romans so singularly obsessed with their military successes? Because it was a military um, organisation, 
the, um, the Roman, the, well, there was a large military organization within the Roman Republic. The Roman Republic was very focused on warfare. And she makes a very compelling case that when we look at the Republic transitioning into the Empire, that wasn't the consequence of big men in history like Caesar being assassinated or Augustus forming an empire and all the really interesting stuff that happened then. It was an inevitable consequence of the way that the Roman Republic was constructed, the way that the society was so based on military might and also individual power. So it inevitably was going to result in an autocratic military regime. Regime. So, yeah. Sorry, I, I, I really, I was blown away by how good this was. If you look on the back cover of this, um, and on the inside, uh, on, on both ends, Mary Beard is being showered with praise for this book, and honestly, totally agree with all of it. Um, uh, anybody who's interested in history should read this book. Anybody, possibly, who likes thinking about those bigger points, you know, whether uh, the big men in history are the people who you know, got things done, or was it the broader factors? Um, looking more analytically at, for, at, for example, the role of women, and there is a, there is a thread of sort of look, looking at the um, how well represented on the scene Roman women were, the social the social factors, the, the economic factors. You know, looking at what was it like for the ninety nine percent of Romans that we have very little evidence for. Um, a, a, anybody who's interested in those kind of big sweeping questions, or is interested in the Romans specifically, we definitely read it. Um, equally, if you're thinking maybe, if you're going, about, if you're going to go to uni, you're thinking of doing a humanities subject, read this. For the love of God, read this. I'm struggling to think of anybody who shouldn't read this. Um, the only thing I could say is it is quite a meaty book. It's 500 pages, it did take me a while to read. Um, and it is, it's pretty dense. So, you know, don't, don't read it if you like, sort of want something frothy. Um, but you know, it's a great train and plane book. Um, you lose yourself in it for you know 100 pages at a time. <sighs> yeah, I think you know what I think about this by now. <laughs> so that was what I thought of SBQR. Fantastic. By comparison, I have read this recently, and I'm going to be doing a special book club, um, uh, talking with a bunch of friends of mine, uh, doing a group discussion about Harry Potter and the Cursed Child. So if you haven't read it, I'd recommend that you try and read it. Honestly, it takes like six hours, it's not long. Um, I think that'll be uploaded within a, uh, the next couple of days to the channel. Yeah, looking forward to having a bit of group discussion on this one. And then next, as I say, is Sapiens, A Brief History of Human Cut. No, no, it cannot be. It can't be yet, no, no, it's too, uh, it's too soon. It's the sellout alarm. So this isn't a sponsored video, I want to be very clear, and I will be very clear in future when videos are sponsored. But this video is supported, I suppose is the best way to put it, by a company called Blinkist. I respect you guys way too much to just peddle stuff at you, and I've been contacted by so many people like trying to get me to plug stuff in videos or you know, do reviews or whatnot. I actually replied to this one because it's an amazing service. So basically Blinkist is a company that has condensed forms of books, like I'm talking, you read a book in 10 minutes, or you listen to a book in 10 minutes, and that, that's mostly what I'm doing, actually. I've been listening to, I think over the past couple of weeks, I've listened to about 20 books, uh, and they take like 10 minutes each. I can do them when I'm walking to work or if I'm on a train or something. So Blinkist is something that you either get on your phone or you can get it online, and you have different levels of subscription. So the company gave me a bunch of um, months for free, which I've been making the most of, um, and they've given me a special link. So there's a link on the screen and down in the description. If you click that link and you choose, if you like what you see, which I actually really think you will, I chose this to, to partner with because I genuinely think it's really, really good and I think you'll like it. If you click that link, then I get a certain cut of if you buy a subscription, for example. So it helps yourself by getting a really, really great service, but it also helps me and kind of helps keep the PhD lifestyle going because Living hand to mouth a little bit here, guys. But like I say, it's really, really good. And like, just to go through some of the stuff that I've been reading recently, um, while well, listening to, um, one of which I definitely recommend, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, a book that my supervisor actually gave me at the start of my PhD. So comparing how um, how much information I retained from the book and from the audio, uh, like the, the condensed version, just as much, on it, like genuinely. Also listened to a really interesting one on Tesla by Margaret Cheney, a really interesting one on Teddy Roosevelt, um, Oxygen, How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie, like an absolute classic, took 10 minutes to listen to, I now saved myself reading a really long book, which is probably going to have exactly the same amount of information, just with lots of padding in. So if you like the sound of reading dozens of books, I'm, I'm actually going to try and set myself a challenge maybe to read like 50 books in a week with the service. Um, if you like the sound of that, and you want to support me, 
Click that link, get yourself a Blinkist, even if it's just for a month, see what it's like. I really, really think you're going to like it. Thanks very much to Blinkist for reaching out and offering this deal to you, know, you guys. Thank you for watching, and I'll be seeing you in a couple of weeks to talk about Sapiens.